Hello and welcome to NGen Math 7 by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 1, Lesson 2 on division. All right, now there's a lot to review with division and we're going to see uh, more complicated division in future lessons like division with decimals and division with fractions. Today we want to look at some basics along with division uh, in, in terms of division. You know, some division algorithms, how it may connect to fractions and things like that. All right, and we'll keep that decimal and fraction stuff until a little bit later. But let's jump right into the, the basics of division in our first exercise. All right, let's take a look. Oh my goodness, we're, we skipped a page. There we go. All right, we're on track. Exercise number one. Review the process of long division by finding each of the following quotients. That's just the name that we give to the result of a division problem. So let's do it. Let's talk about it. Now, I mean, here we've got 945 divided by 15. So remember, the idea is, I sort of think of it as, well, how many times will 15 go into the number 9? And of course, since 9 is smaller than 15, it doesn't, right? So then I think about it as, how many times will 15 go into the number 94? Now, because 94 is larger than 15, right, now we can start to work this division problem. And this is really kind of a guess and check sort of thing. Is it 3 times? Is it 4 times? 5, 6, etc., right? Now, just once, well, maybe not just once, but at least for the first time, let me make an incorrect guess. Let me say I'm going to put 5 up there, all right? So if I put 5 here, right, the idea is then I would do 5 times 15. So 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 is 75. Now I'm going to do subtraction, and I'm going to get 19. Now let's just pause for a moment and talk about why that tells me that the 5 is not the correct choice to begin with. And the reason why is that 19 is bigger than 15. So in other words, 15 could have gone into this number a little bit more than 5 times. In fact, it's going to go in there 6 times. So let me kind of erase this work and take it from there. All right. So delete, that's easy enough for me. So now I can say 6 times, 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 1 is 6, plus a number th another 3 is 9. So now when I do the subtraction, I just get 4. Now remember, at this point, I'm going to drop the 5 down. Now I have to think about how many times 15 goes into 45. That's going to be 3. 3 times 5 is 5. 15. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. Subtract, and I get a remainder of 0. Right. So simple enough, right? 945 divided by 15 is 63. Now, of course, I'm going to have you pause the video and work a little bit on the harder problem, letter B. Why don't you go ahead and do that and see if you can find the correct quotient there. All right, so let's go through it again, right? Just like before, I'm thinking about how many times 67 goes into 15. No good there, 15 is too small. How many times 67 goes into 156? Well, 67 is kind of close to 70, right? 70 times 2 is 140, whereas 70 times 3 would be 210. So I think I'm going to go with the 2. I'm using a little bit of estimation there. So let's, let's do this, right? So I've got 2. 2 times 7 is 14. Carry the 1. 2 times 6 is 13, 12 plus 1 is 13, so now I can do my subtraction, and I'll find 22. I'm now going to drop my 7 down there, all right? I think I'm going to erase this 1 here just to make life a little bit easier. Now I have to think about how many times 67 goes into 227. Let's try 3 this time. 3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 6 is 18, plus another 2 is 20. I subtract. I get 26. Bring that 8 down, I get 268. Mm, maybe now 4, right? Maybe I'll erase this 2 again so it's not confusing. 4 times 7 is 28. 4 times 6 is 24, plus another 2 is 26. And as promised, a 0 remainder. All right, so hopefully you got 234 when you did that quotient. Right? And again, both of these problems designed so that there were no remainders. We'll talk about them in a little bit.
All right, let's move on, do a little bit more with division. All right, exercise number two. A soccer tournament has a total of 304 players. If there are 16 teams with an equal number of players on each team, how many players are there per team? So what we're getting with in this particular problem is the essence of one way to interpret division. In other words, I've got 304 things. They happen to be soccer players. I have 16 buckets, if you will. Those are my 16 teams. I'm putting soccer players into each of the buckets, right? And I want to see at the end of it all, if there's the same number of players on each team, how many are on each team. So I'm going to be doing 304 divided by 16. So, right, right. This is my actual division problem. But in terms of mechanically pulling it off, I want to write it like that, right? 304 divided by 16. Pause the video for a minute and see if you can figure out how many soccer players there are on each team. All right, well again, we wanna just figure out 16 going into 30. That's gonna be only one time. I know that because two times 16 is 32, right? So we're gonna have just one up here, one times 16 is 16. When I do the subtraction, that gives me 14, which is good. It's smaller than 16. I drop that final four down, right? Now I think about how many times 16 goes into 144, right? Maybe that's not 10 times, because that would be too big. So let's go, let's go with uh, eight times. Let's see what we have. Eight times six um, is 48. And eight times one plus four is 128, and that's gonna be too small. So let's go with nine. Sometimes you have to be willing to erase in division. Nine times six is 54. Carry the five, nine times one is nine, plus five is 14, there it is. And we have a total of 19 players per team. Actually, let me do that, per team, right? Because we just really found a rate. How many players per team, a rate or a ratio? We'll talk about those a bunch in an upcoming lesson. All right, so one, again, interpretation of division is I've got a certain number of things, and I'm gonna divide those evenly up into a certain number of groups. How many things per group are there? All right, that's this interpretation. Let's keep taking a look at division. All right, let's take a look at another interpretation of division in exercise number three. Yellow Bell Farm produced 1,632 eggs in a day and put them in cartons that hold 12 eggs per carton. First thing we're asked in letter A, find the quotient 1,632 divided by 12. Why don't you take a minute or two and find that quotient? All right, let's go through it. All right, 12 into this number. So 12 goes into 16 one time, right? So I write down my 12 and I subtract, I get four, bring down the three. 12 will go into 43, three times. Three times 12 is 36. When I do my subtraction there, I get seven, bring down that final two, 72. Six times 12 is 72 and get zero. So my quotient is 136. Now the real question though, 136 what exactly? What did we just find? That's letter B. What does your answer in A represent in terms of the real world situation? Pause the video for a second. What does that tell us? All right, well, it's gonna tell us the number of cartons. 132 cartons of eggs. Now, I mentioned this is another interpretation of division. Remember, in the last problem, right, we had a certain number of soccer players and a certain number of teams, and we were trying to figure out how many soccer players per team there was. All right, in this case, 
right? We have how many eggs there are, and we know how many eggs there are going to be in each carton, and we're figuring out how many cartons there are. So in this case, we're figuring out, right, how many groups we have based on how many objects are in each group. This is kind of the interpretation of division in terms of how many times does 12 fit into 1,632? How many times does 12 go into that number? Oh, 136 times. Whereas in the last problem, we were really saying, ah, oh, I've got these 304 players, I've got these 16 teams, I want to put out in the same number in each team, how many players are there? Oh, 19 per team. All right, and there are two very different ways of looking at division. In one case, we know the number of groups, and we want to know the number of objects per group. In the other case, we know the number of objects per group, and we want to know how many groups. In this case, how many groups are how many cartons. Those groups just happen to hold a dozen eggs. All right, let's keep moving on with division. All right, fractions and division. Fractions and divisions are so closely related that when you start using calculators, especially graphing calculators at the high school level, the division symbol is pretty much universally replaced simply with the fraction symbol. A over B, when A is in the numerator, B is in the denominator, is simply the same as A divided by B, right? So when I see something like the fraction 1 over 2, 1 half, that literally is the result of 1 being divided into two equal parts, right? If I took one pizza and I divided it into two equal parts, each one of them, right, would be a half of a pizza. So let's take a look at exercise four just to make sure you get this idea. It's amazingly, amazingly important, the idea that A over B is the same as A divided by B. Exercise number four. Each of the following fractions can be converted to a whole number using division. Do so and show the long division if needed. All right, and here's what I mean by that. Let me like raise the screen just a little bit, right? 12 halves, right, 12 over two, is simply the same as 12 divided by two. Now I'm assuming that most of you don't particularly need long division to show that that's equal to six, okay? I doubt you'll need it either in letter B, but you'll probably maybe need it in letter C. So convert both, both of those fractions, 45 fifths and 207 ninths, into whole numbers by using division. All right, easy peasy, here we go, right? 45 over five is the same as 45 divided by five, and that is the same as nine. Now, 207 ninths, this one's maybe the only one that's a little bit more complicated just because it's not sort of double in single digits. 207 divided by 9, that's the kind of thing you might have to take over on the side of your paper and go, all right, so 9 goes into 22 times, I get 18, then I drop that 7 down, 9 goes into 27, 23 times. So 207 ninths is the same as the whole number 23. Okay, I cannot emphasize how important it is to make the connection between fractions and division. The division, that fraction bar, means divide the top by the bottom. All right, let's keep going. Little more on division. All right, let's talk about improper fractions, right? It's not improper because walking down the sidewalk the fraction insults you or anything. The fractions are improper when their numerator is larger than their denominator. Now in the last case, in the last ex exercise, we saw each one of those turned out to be nice whole numbers, okay? But what happens when we have something like this where 37 is not nicely divisible by 5? Well, let's take a look at what this problem gets at. Exercise 5. Consider the improper fraction 37 fifths answer the following questions. Letter A. Real simple. What is the closest multiple of 5 that is less than 37? So a multiple of 5 is a number that 5 nicely goes into, right? Well, the closest multiple of 5 to 37 that's still smaller than it, right, is 35. That's simple enough. <clears throat> Letter B says write this fraction into the sum of two fractions, one of which has a numerator equal to your answer in A. Simplify this sum into a mixed number. All right. Here's what I mean, and never forget this. 37 fifths is literally 37 of these one-fifths. 
So 37 fifths could be thought of as 35 fifths plus another 2 fifths, right? Surely if I have 35 apples and 2 apples, I have 37 apples. So if I have 35 fifths and 2 fifths, I have 37 fifths. But now this can be nicely simplified. 35 fifths is the same as 35 divided by 5, which is 7. And then 2 fifths is hanging on. So this is 7 and 2 fifths. Now, how does that then connect to performing this long division? Well, let's do that all together, right? So we're going to perform this long division 5 into 37. Well, that's easy, right? Because we get 7, and that's 35 with a remainder of 2, right? So we have a remainder of 2. How does this correspond to our answer up here in B? Well, the plain fact is if we see something like 37 fifths, all we need to do, if I can get up here, if we've got 37 fifths, I just need to think of it as, okay, I'm going to do 37 divided by 5. I'm going to end up getting 7, right? I have a remainder of 2. As long as that remainder is less than the 5, that is then the numerator, right, in that extra portion that's a fraction. So I can always do something like this, where 37 divided by 5 becomes 7, and two-fifths, right? That two is still being divided by five, right? We still have that remainder of two being divided by five. We're just now expressing it as the fraction two-fifths. Let's get a little more practice on this in the next exercise. The next and final exercise, exercise number six. Write each of the following improper fractions as mixed numbers by first performing the long division to determine the remainder. All right, well, let's do the easy one together and then we'll have you pause the video and work on the harder one in letter B. So 67, right? I wanna know what this is equal to in terms of a mixed number. So I'm gonna do 60, I'm gonna divide by seven, right? And I'm gonna think, okay, 60 divided by seven, well, the closest I can get is eight, right? And eight times seven is 56. And when I subtract, I end up having four left over. Well, that remainder then gives me that unit fraction that hangs on. In other words, 67, 60 sevenths is going to be equal to 7. Oh, sorry, not 7. It's going to be equal to 8, this thing, and 4 sevenths. So my quotient of 8 plus a remainder of 4 sevenths. Why don't you give it a shot with 185 twelfths? Pause the video now and see what that converts into in terms of a mixed number. All right, let's go through it. 185 divided by 12. All right, 12, there we go, goes into 18 one time, right? Do the subtraction, try to do the subtraction, and I'm left with 65. 12 goes into 65 five times. Five times 12 ends up being 60. Subtract, and we get a remainder of five. That means 185 twelfths can be written as 15 and five twelfths. So the 15, right, is our quotient. The five is our remainder, and so that we get 15 and five twelfths. All right, so whenever we've got a fraction, that's an improper fraction, we can change it to a mixed number by simply doing the division, finding that quotient, and then the remainder becomes the numerator in sort of the fraction that kind of hangs on at the end. All right, let's go ahead and wrap up this lesson. Much of the division that we saw today was simply a review of how to do that sort of long division algorithm, and that is extremely important to know how to do. As well, we also looked at the connection, right, between division and its interpretations, right? How many objects are in a group, or how many groups do we have if we know how many things are in the group, right? That, those two interpretations of division, very, very important, as well as the connection that division has to fractions and vice versa. We're gonna be using all of these skills in future lessons. For now, though, I just want to thank you for joining me, Kirk Weiler, for another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. Until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.